much of this match, but it's the men in white, the men that look to take this race right down to the wire, the last game or the last few games that they can, that open the scoring at the FNB Stadium. That beautiful game, that can be cruel, but beautiful as well. It's the Komodise, the Komodise, the supplier. It's the Komodise, the scorer. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mimush. I'm joined by uh, a man you will know pretty well, but today we're not discussing, we're not deep, deep diving into football. We're talking about the rise of Donadoni, Tulufelo, Tiko Modise, you know. Uh, you know him from his days playing at Orlando Pirates, Super Sport United. I mean, you are the poster boy for <laughs> the 2010 uh, World Cup, my mm. first World Cup as a journalist, yeah. uh, by the way. Um, quite enjoyed it. So we're going to just focus on, 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 on your life, you know. Yeah. Ninoush, our idea is to be uh, brave, uh, is to be relaxed mm. and just zoom in into your life. Yeah. You know, I mean, Donna, you, you used to this now. Mm. Uh, days after playing football, uh, the conversation has changed. The narrative yeah. has changed. You know, even to fashion now. You know. <laughs> Not really. You know, you've, you've, you've started your own agency as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of things. I mean, this episode is uh, issue 14, our se September issue of Mimush. Um So check it out uh, later when it comes out. But let's get into it, Donna. Yeah. The rise of the Komodise. Maybe we can start there. I know it's a it's a long and detailed story. Yeah, yeah where do you want to start? Yeah, yeah. Let, maybe let's start there. Where, where did things uh, begin for, for Tulu Fellow to come I mean, it's a story that in some ways is probably told to some yeah. degree because you did write a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? uh, but we want some of the you know things that you, you left out of that book. That yeah, there's a lot. Share and, and be vulnerable about uh, in yeah. this episode of, of, of Minish. The rise. Yeah. Sure. I think uh, I'll probably say the, um, the first big opportunity that I got when I was recruited by Ria Stars uh, to move from Soweto to, to, to Limpopo. My first time moving out of Jowak, you know, driving out of Jowak. I didn't even know where Limpopo was. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I um, had uh, to, 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 to travel to Limpopo, not knowing exactly what is it that I'm going to face that side. But I was brave enough to make that decision to move away from home. But why are you going to Limpopo when you are, you know, so where to born? Yeah. And there's, in some people say they leave those cities to come to Gauti, yeah. so where to and make it happen. It's weird because of um, the opportunities for now, I think at the time, um, but there were not many. Uh, first of all, I, did, I was a player that never liked uh, the trials. So um, um, I was surrounded by players that were constantly on trials and then now like I'll, I'll, I'll go with no lie and um, I remember going to um, school of excellence trial um, there was like I don't know 30 40 of us traveling yeah. together and then the more the more uh, days of the trials you know the less number we're traveling with and I remember there was like maybe two or three of us left yeah and then we went there and then when I was supposed to now go I'm, I'm, the, I'm the only one now though I still going for trial because they still want to see me and um, I end up going and never trained yeah so I've always been a shy kid never wanted to to talk the spotlight and and I think maybe based on the, the personality that I had I think maybe that's the part that actually delayed my uh, my my opportunities to come and play in the PSO as early as possible but then when that opportunity came from Naruke Colin Popo I think I remembered all the opportunities that I missed and then I took a chance on going to Limpopo you get to Limpopo, do you have any money in your pocket? What's, but, what's your financial status? But I don't even have a bank account. <laughs> um, I was broke. Uh, no, 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 no ambition as well. And, and it was never motivated by money. It was just an opportunity because also I've, I've seen a lot of guys that I, um, I used to watch play. The professionals like Tso Villegas, Terminator, Mabala, and they were professionals for we from the same hood. And for now, was like, okay, when am I? Because I think there was a pressure zone from Gold Kishine, like, when are you, when are you moving? Yeah. Like, why are you still here? Yeah. You know, and when that opportunity came through, I was like, okay, there's my opportunity. Let me, let me see what's going to happen. And, and then when I went to Limpopo, I remember, I think I went to Limpopo two weeks later, we were playing um, with a charity cup. Yeah. We had to now come back to Jova, get FNB Stadium. So while sitting on the box, 
um, you know, all these other guys from Gokasi, now they're realizing me, they see me there because Riesta, there was not like a big announcement like with Sante Comedies or like that. Because you were a nobody. I was a nobody. Yeah. So like guys were like, they were surprised to see me at the players' lounge with the players. And, uh, and I think maybe that's when also the realization that I now am in the PSL. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Donna, at the time, obviously you say no money. And I remember you also spoke a little bit about this in the past that, you know, People that you went to school with, for instance, yeah. they are talking about being doctors, you know, lawyers. That 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 was not your ambition at all. No, 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 never. So you would say my good last thing that uh, you normally get people that ask or teachers actually they ask you what what is it that you want to do when you grow up, and everybody was saying all these nice things. I want to be this. I want to be that. Mm. And uh, when I was asked, I said I want to be a professional footballer. And I think there was um, an awkward silence in the room. Um, because normally you want to be something else and a footballer, but yeah. I just said I just wanted to be a professional footballer. So I remember my teacher was like, oh, what's your plan B? I said, I don't have a plan B. I just want to be a professional football. Yeah, football, yeah. football player. Yeah. And from there on, um, I started practicing signatures in the class, started uh, by making sure that I have football magazines. Like I was, if I had money, I'll buy, instead of buying food, I'll buy like a football magazine and read interviews about the players as well. And I just to keep in touch because I've always been a student of the game. I always wanted to know what's happening, um, who's famous, who have signed, who have moved where. So, so for the night it was just uh, knowing the culture of the of, of the game as, as possible, so that when I do have an opportunity, um, it's it's something that is familiar to me. So, don't I want to hear how the family uh, takes this? Obviously, at a young age, moving mm. to a different city, uh, you know the sacrifices that that you've made. I think what. What was fortunate, kind of, um, I never really, really stayed at home. Um, I started moving around when I was eight. I moved around a lot. I moved around with my mom a lot. And when I was 13, 14, um, I stayed with um, the team owner of the club that I was playing for, uh, Coventry, uh, Deep Loof Coventry in Deep Loof. So I stayed there. And, uh, and that's the guy that actually was pushing me to go for trials. And I think at some point he got pissed off that. I, he, he couldn't understand what I'm So can I go to the clubhouse and what, what you had to stay with the guy? Yeah, I was staying with him in the same house and, and I had to be brought up by that family. Luckily, they took me in. And when I got the break, I was still staying with them. So it wasn't like I, already, um, I used to go, I have to go back to home and tell my mom that I'm moving. It was just something that I had to do on my own. And um, and when that happened, actually, for now, it was very scary, to be honest with you. Uh, because now I'm going to a place where I don't know anybody, but also for the fact that I never actually did not stayed in one place for more than two years. So actually that helped because I thought, okay, Shab, it's, it's something that I've been doing anyway. So it may just square. It's now at least it's been driven by football, not because of changing houses. Did you make it? I mean, you know, we, we kind of know the story now yeah, that yeah. Diko Modise went on to play for Bafana Bafana, yeah, and yeah. the Pirates, Super Sports United, but you know, Uno, uno Holab guy. <laughs> I was earning two grand and within the two grand that I was earning, um, I had to pay for accommodation, which was like, I think at the time was six, 600, 600 rands. And you had a cell phone contract. I had a cell phone contract. So, so we you were left with nothing. Really. Yeah, nothing really. Like, um, but, uh, but, and, and luckily later on within the season itself, I started staying a bit because the chose that end up playing for Lano Pirates. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when I don't have money, he will help a little bit because he was earning more than me. But for na that time, I remember even him telling me that in fact you went about Europa, but I don't think um, it was a problem for me yeah. because where I come from, I never even had 2,000 in my bank account. Yeah. So there's a lot of money for me. Yeah, for you as of far course, as you're concerned, how old course. are you at this time? I think I'm 18. Two, 2K for a boy from Soweto who's never, who doesn't even have a bank account. For you, you are, you are balling. Yeah, I'm, I'm balling proper. <laughs> and then and, and, and 18, 18 year old, uh, to be honest, I've never had anything new that I can call my own. So for the first time, I, I bought myself something. So it was, it was like, uh, for now, that was it. That's how I felt like I made it before even making it on the pitch for the fact that I could, able, I could be able to buy myself something with my own money that I've earned. Yeah, it was life changing for me. How quickly did you feel like you became famous? How quickly did you have to deal with the, you know, some would say the demon that is the reality of being popular, famous, you know, and more money in the pocket? Because since then, people know your story, obviously. Yeah. You, you, you moved on to bigger and better things. Yeah, I think because, because even, even from, even from Kukasi, I was always known, but I wasn't that famous. 
um, even Goskela, like I was known proper, but also because of football. But I think it, it took it took time for me for people to actually um, 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 realize the type of potential that I had. I mean, Korea Stars, I only played eight games, mm -hmm. and um, even then, you know, there was not too many teams. Eight games only, it felt like more. Yeah, I played only eight games, to be honest with you. And and the first coach that actually gave me an opportunity was uh, uh, Shepard Murap. Yeah. He's the only coach that actually gave me an opportunity. I played more games under him. Other coaches were, it was very difficult to break through. I mean, I had competing against quality players within that midfield. But when I went to to my second team was uh, City Pillars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's when now uh, the fame started. But even though it was a very a small, bit, a bit more ching ching. Of course, it was. It was a lot of money from from 2014. <laughs> so so I was earning 14 at, uh, at in in the NFD yeah. days, and and that's what 2001, 2002. Yeah. 14,000 was a lot of money, and um, I was luckily the team also bought me a car. So yeah. and the, the accommodation was for free, so I wasn't paying anything. So the fourteen came straight into your straight. Uh, no bank account, just envelope. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's. But I also was earning more because once I bumped into the owner of the club, anywhere that I could bump into him, he'll give me money. So I was yeah. always I was I was always earning more than I was supposed to earn from yeah. the, from the club. And when did you then have to to deal with? Like I said, obviously yeah. the the realities of who who you were. Did it change your person? Did you? Yeah. You know, staying grounded. I think it changed. It changed on my my. I started dealing with the demon last season of my NFD days. Mm -hmm. so after winning, I think it was a football of the year or player of the year from the division itself. Um, because now I saw. I remember people giving me a newspaper where all sixteen teams were like they 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 looking for my signature. Yeah. I think then everybody could cast a start to me differently because when you're playing NFD days, those days there was no yeah, no yeah, game was yeah. televised. They, they not so they didn't know they didn't understand the magnitude of the fame that I had in the NFD days. But coming back to Kasi to see that happening, it changed how I behave, it changed how actually people that I grew up with uh, behave around and uh, already they treated me like a superstar already because I'm in the newspaper. And and from then on, and then I started now moving a little bit different. I think I became more shy mm. than I was before because now these are guys that I was in the same class level, and so all of a sudden now, you know, they look at me like a superstar. So it was very very difficult to actually adjust to that. Yeah, and how how do you overcome those kind of challenges? You, I don't think you can. It's just it's, mm. it's it's. I think it's a matter of how you deal with them. How how soon are you actually admit and be able to deal with it? Because my after my super sport days everything became fast yeah from from super sport to like pirates and then everything got magnified and then and then once that happened now you've been known by the whole country i think that's 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 the magnitude of a lot of pirates you play for that team you play well the whole country knows who you are and then from there you the certain places that i can go i think it was it was all based on me nobody actually told me those things but it just had the responsibility that coming with being a superstar playing for such a big team and so you learned it felt like Korki gets a bit there because of i moved a little bit differently and guys even my teammates like they never really really liked me that yeah. much well when you buy aston martin you, you do <laughs> move differently <laughs> 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 you know, so that's that's yeah. part of the thing. I mean, I don't want to deep dive too much into the stories that people know. But yeah. Maybe let's 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 uh, remove the mask a little bit and talk about family and life. Yeah. You know, um, during that time, you you know you 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 have you have children, yeah. you get married. Tell us about you know the, the the other side of of life besides the football stories that we know about. Well, the other side is um, once I became a dad, I wanted to. I wanted to be everything that my dad wasn't, but because so young without understanding what it means and to be a parent, what it means to be a father, it's trying to lay the fame, I learn as I go. I don't have a father figure around me. Everybody's looking at me as a superstar and everything thinks that I, he's got everything covered. And, uh, and I thought to myself, okay, cool. Let me, let me get married early while in my peak settle and I have a family because I never had a family surrounding and all and all my childhood and then that's what i wanted to do but then the the issues with that is is once you have a drive i had this drive and ambition and building ambition and once you involve in a relationship there's there's sometimes when there's no balance the yeah. problem and i didn't have that type of a balance where i'm married to a person that can understand my vision and be very supportive so it becomes a, a thing but you're never in the house 
yeah you never do this you never so she didn't that. she didn't you feel like she didn't get you or she didn't get what you were what you were doing trying to find a balance between being a family man and a, and a, I, a, I think a both. footballer yeah. yeah i think both i don't think she she got me because i had i had a, I had a pressure of of making sure that i'm in the um the final team that's going to be representing the country in 2010 and also i have this responsibility of performing well for all in the pirates week in week out and within that i can't just rely on the training sessions of the club i need to yeah. do my own thing and you have endorsements that you, you have commitments that exactly you have to, yeah. so there was there was a lot so honestly i was never in the house like i'm forever out doing all these things and 2010 is coming through so everything is congested and now when you don't have anybody that is very supportive around you of course there's going to be all those gaps and, and 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 the disconnect started happening from there on so what happens to to your relationship i uh, within six months of it Within six months of the marriage, I knew this wasn't going to work yeah. because of I knew that is, if there's one thing that I'll never sacrifice was football. And I felt like I, I was in a position where I had to choose one. And I will never put myself in a position where I have to choose. Mm. And I didn't want anybody to put me in a position where I have to choose because football is my life. Yeah. And uh, for me, even though it was very difficult and, and dealing with the divorce, but it was, an, it was an easy decision to make. How do you deal with that when you're a public figure, a Bafana Bafana poster boy and all of that? Because everybody knows your business now. Yeah, yeah. The tabloids are coming for you. Jesus. It's still tough because then all I wanted, uh, all I wanted was people to know me from, from, from a being a football on the pitch, nothing else. And, and I made sure that uh, even when I was still dating, it was always, always like on the low. I would, you'll never see me. Um, in public with a, with any woman that I dated because I wanted to to keep it on the low. But once now the media or the public actually knows about your business, you don't. And as a footballer, you don't have even a, an opportunity to come and say, eh, "But that's not that's not it. That's a lie." Okay, that I can understand. Yeah. So you don't have a platform to actually explain yourself. And it's unfortunate now that I had to everywhere that I go into the meeting that I had to go to and try and explain the situation what it was. And it also it didn't make it any better because now you're dealing with a person also that is hurt dealing with her hurt her own way and then she's, she's using the media now to deal with the hurt yeah high and only only understanding that it tarnishes my name so now it forced me out to work a little bit harder even on my shy days now it made me even it made things even worse and and i remember as well i started hating the media because of that yeah um because of all the stories that were written about me and uh, and also and which which i understand because at the time i was just a mystery boy people knew who i was from a football perspective but no, nobody understood yeah, where i come from yeah, so yeah. everybody wanted to find as to where, where is it that i come from so when those things came through i had like an aha moment for the media and they used that mm -hmm. and for a night it was it was like about having good to the media why all of a sudden okay okay if you want to write a story why don't you actually call me because there out? had never been any scandals about nothing and whatever nothing. and i mean also this wasn't necessarily a scandal yeah yeah, yeah. You, it's life you are getting you've you've fallen yeah, yeah. out of love or whatever the case may be too busy True. And you're going your separate ways and, and and even with that when 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 i decided to part ways we we had a conversation we had a sit down like this we had a conversation i said this is not going to work this is not working i don't want to be in a, in a space where i'm unhappy and you are unhappy and and i've got duties and responsibilities that i need to take care of and this is that i've been working hard to get to this to this position so um let's 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 figure out what is it that you want let's settle this out of court let's 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 do this very quietly and after the agreement that we had and then everything else happened that was so disappointing <laughs> because we agreed and we we because even Lynn, at some point i i had to deal with that because it was painful it wasn't something i didn't get married to get divorced mm. so it was very painful to deal with that but at least then i used football as a tool for me to be able because that's what that's what football has been in my life yeah. everything that has been painful everything that i've been dealing with the traumas that i've been dealing with i always used the football to actually help me out deal with those so even when i was i was going through what i was going through i remember I was winning individual awards though. Mm. So so that actually gave me a little bit of of, of it was something your escape to, for. to some degree. Yeah. A lot, a lot. It's it actually if it wasn't for football, so that's why I didn't want to be in a position where I had to choose one because if I know football what it does for me, that other things can't. But also you love love, you didn't stop. Hey, you see it, you know? Remarried. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I'll never get married again. And I did say that I'll never get married again. Yeah. And um, and it just happens. And also because I think it's 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 something that happened when I was. It's a thought that came through when I was in Cape Town. And 
at least then I, I, I liked myself better. Um, I was appreciative of myself and the things that I've done in the game. And, yeah. and you said something very interesting to me uh, a while back about Cape Town just humbled you. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you got there and it just a different environment altogether. I suppose that's when you, it sounds cliche, but you found, you find, you found yourself to yeah. some extent. Yeah. yeah. And this is like even the twilight of your career. Yeah. You're just wrapping things up here. Yeah. Look, I'm very fortunate to, to be able to have that opportunity to go to Cape Town because I remember even when I, because I forced myself out of Sundowns to go to Cape Town. And in the salary cut. It makes no business sense. <laughs> From Sundowns to Cape Town City and you forcefully going out, especially at the, the age that I was in, it yeah. makes no financial sense. But I was so adamant about Cape Town and not understanding or what actually Cape Town would give to me. Yeah. And once I got there six months into it. And Cape Town's more expensive than It is Jogo, more expensive yeah. in Jogo. But, but the thing is like, I, I, because for now, I've never played football for money. So it was never about the money. Because yeah. I remember even I had, when I had all the monies that you can actually think of, I was the most unhappiest person on earth. Yeah. So it was never really, really about the money. Of course, it, it's a means you can buy certain things, but those things never actually filled the void that yeah, I, was, yeah, yeah. I was having. So Cape Town actually, when I got there, it humbled me in a sense that I could walk in a restaurant and sit down without being disturbed, without anybody calling my name. Yeah. And I could actually go anywhere. I don't have to dress a certain way to go certain places. And, and the lifestyle in Cape Town is so humble. So for now, vice versa, the, the lifestyle at Joburg. And I think that's when I started prioritizing things. Yeah. And I don't think if I was in Joburg, I'll be able to actually have time to prioritize things because I, I was so busy. My Josie, I was very, very busy because sometimes this, this, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So I never actually had time for myself. And I think Cape Town, that was the first time in my life being a professional footballer that I found time for me. So that's why um, 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 the feeling of also maybe settling down, having... You can do it again. I can do it again because yeah. then I was so appreciative of so many things. Yeah. And I realized as well that even if that marriage came at this time, it would have worked because of I worked on myself. Yeah. Now I understand myself better. And it's easy for me to actually teach other people about me when I understand myself. But at the time when I was married, the first marriage, I didn't understand. I didn't know. The responsibility that I was carrying. So the frustration was, I don't even know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing on the pitch, but I don't know everything else what I'm doing because I look at when I was, I was sitting in a room in a meeting where I know that everybody's taking something from me yeah. in this room. Nobody's giving me anything. Yeah. I'm just here to 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 listen to people planning about how to take something from me. So and and also in and in, in the back of your mind, you're like, but I'd rather be in this position than than not have yeah, this opportunity yeah, yeah, at all. Definitely. Yeah, so, so Cape Town actually helped me in terms of really, really, really understanding where I am. So this happens, I don't know how many years was it in Cape Town? Two, three years at Cape Town, at Cape Town City. Uh, you retire eventually. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's some discussions about being an ambassador and mm. whatever, but you come back here to, how did you deal with retirement and, you know, get into the stuff that you are, you know, we'll get into that a little bit more, but mm. how did you deal with, the reality of retiring because some some footballers just don't want to let go yeah you, you know you can, i mean you can't play forever yeah i think that's the sad truth you know the funny part is about my retirement was we just it was early early august or late august or early september somewhere that we just won the mtna cup and we we celebrating we out Cape Town City is it's, it's, a, it's a weird club where you can actually celebrate with the team <laughs> owner. You go to that Cubana I say by Kuwait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so it was the only uh, at the time I was the only player that was fortunate enough to can actually have a nice time with the management or chill with the management at all because that's how seriously they took me from Cape Town City. Yeah, yeah. So I was chilling there, and I could see I was scanning everybody. Everybody was so happy, but I wasn't. Yeah, I was like ah. I'm back to that feeling again. I don't yeah. want to have this feeling again. Yeah. So I was trying to, I was try, the whole night I was trying to figure out why I'm so, I'm, I'm so unhappy yeah. when... This is now three years of you being at, in Cape Town. Yeah, but yeah. I've, just, I've just won the league. Yeah, I've yeah, just yeah. won the cup. The cup, yeah. And, and I remember bumping into, because we moved from that uh, uh, Cuban and then went to a club after that. Um, we, I bumped into Tabo September like, oh, Tabo, I've never actually told Tabo this thing. I, I bumped into Tabo and then Tabo, Tabo is not a speaker. I played with Tabo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, Tabo, now you're an ambassador of MTN8. He's like, no, I'm not. But I'm making more money than I was when I was playing. Yo. You see, that line, that line made me rethink of why I'm still playing. Yeah. 
and I remember after having we had like a brief conversation with Tabo yeah. and I remember calling my agent at the time the very same night yeah. when people are celebrating with their medals and all that stuff I remember calling my manager and Jasmine got a, I am retiring end of the season and this is the beginning of yeah, the season yeah, 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 yeah. I said end of the season I'm retiring please so it was news anybody. to him too he was shocked he thought I'm because he, thought, he always thought I'm a very emotional person yeah so I called and I said I'm retiring end of the season I called uh, my wife then she was my wife still I said I'm retiring end of the season um, um please don't tell anybody else yeah because I wanted to play to, uh, in the Cape Town City Jersey without being without favors being done. I wanted to play. I didn't want uh, Coach Bain to to look at the game like I just as you tying up the season and play. I wanted to end my stripes. I wanted still to work yeah. harder to play. And I remember when I retired, um, I had no plan, but I knew that I wanted to do something different without coaching because everybody was like, "Come coach here, come coach there." Yeah, that seems to be the natural progression. But exactly. I mean, can you survive? You have to think because and I have to and also, why, for why are footballers retiring broke when you, especially given the PSL era, you, yeah. you, I mean, unless Kiruna to be the figures behind the scenes, or yeah. how much were you actually making? But a lot of the players retire, and then the next thing is like hand to mouth, asking for gigs, and this and this and this and that. I like. I always think the other PSL players that are getting is it's subjective. It depends on who you ask. Some will say there's a lot of money. Some will say no. Depending on the responsibilities that you have. Yeah. And um, and and I and I and I've always emphasized this our in a PSL era. Whoever that plays, you 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 lucky if you you have two good contracts yeah. in your whole career yeah. because normally in the PSO will give you your best contract at 28 29 yeah. and what we do normally at that time as footballers is 28 29 i'm going to buy a like, new house yeah. yeah so i'm going to buy a new house a better car everything yeah, else yeah, by yeah. 32 33 i'm still owing those things that i need to downgrade so that's 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 the system that's how yeah. the system is in the pso i think that's what most which is of what guys, you did at some point you yeah, yeah. downgraded your life i had to down. downgrade everything yeah. i downgraded everything but also because sold of cars and then and, and, i even sold my houses yeah. i've sold everything when i came back when i came back from from cape town with no plan that I speak about, I wanted to start afresh. But you know, you know what I said. I remember even when I was still playing, but I was saying it without understanding the meaning behind it. I used to say, "And I know I've respected this game, and I know when when there's time for the game to to give me back, it will give me." After retiring with no plan, I retired. I announced my retirement on Friday. On a Saturday, I played the game. Sunday, I flew back to Cape Town. Monday, it was dinner awards. Tuesday, I had a call. To start working mm. tuesday tuesday i never stopped working since sure so so it's 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 it comes back to what i was saying football now because of football because of what i've done for the game because of the respect that i had for the game i've never stopped working and it's that's what i'm saying there's a there's a there's an element of luck in it yeah and even though i was still trying to figure out what is it that i, I was gonna do i don't think that I'll, I'll be struggling to get to work for any other team but it's just that I, I didn't want to work because of I'm forced to. I wanted to do things on my own terms. Yeah. And that's why I retired on my own terms at my own time. And, and, and yeah, I'm glad that everything's, everything worked out. Yeah. I'm going to close the football conversation a little bit now and just focus on another facet of uh, Diko's life, which moves us into fashion. Hey, it is fashion. Uh, it, it moves us into uh, being an ambassador. There's yeah. a lot of things that you are doing that I think footballers can learn a yeah. lot from. Yeah. Uh, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about those. I mean, you spoke about coming back to Joburg with no plan. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when we fast forward now, you, you've got, you know, you still have a partnership with Puma who yeah. was sponsoring you when you were a player, but yeah. you seem to be doing a lot of stuff with them. Uh, we've seen you wearing suits and, and, <laughs> and you, we, we spoke about this, me and you spoke yeah. about this. You launched an agency. Yeah. What, what's happening there? Look, the thing is like, I try, I try to find, I try to use, because also the thing is like, after I retired, it was the only time that I was able to own the name The Comedies. Ever since wow, I became, really? Yeah, because ever since I became... Because it, it was such a brand. I mean, like exactly. I it, McDonald's, uh, 2010 Poster Boy, exactly. Nike at some point. Exactly. Yeah. But once you sign any documentation that they're going to use your image, they own that space. Mm. So now for the first time... So you did a lot of research on image rights, which yes. you probably didn't know when you were I getting I didn't know anything contracts. about image rights. Yeah. I got into the PSO, I got those opportunities without knowing anything about it. Right now when you're giving a portion of money uh, in the beginning of the season, we call it signing on fee. Yeah. 
it is image rights. Yeah. So now, for the first time after retiring, I had no signed document to anybody. And I was like, I need to own my name first. It freed you up. Yes, because when I played, when I started playing football, every team that I played for owned my name because they were the pay, they were the one that pays my salary. They were using my image the way that I wanted to. So now I wanted to own my image and use it the way that I want to. And I think that's when the, the, the shift started as to now, okay, Shab, let me position myself properly and attract the brands that I want to work with, not because of I have to work with such a brand. And I think all day from there, and then I, 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 I moved differently, like I moved how I was a footballer, and, and I sustained the relationship that I had with the, with the Pumas, and my relationship with them grew, and then I started attracting, uh, now I'm an ambassador for Sports Pesa, now also there's, um, um, okay, by, this time, the, by the time the episode comes out, they would, they would have announced I'm an um, ambassador for Samsonite, uh, we've got traveling bags, I'm, an, I'm nice. also an ambassador for NGR Jewelry as well. Nice. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing on the side, but also it's because understanding my value, which wow. I never understood. Before. So what Tabo said to you all those years back about earning more yeah. outside football as a retired footballer it, it, it's, is it becoming true for you because yeah. i mean your contracts between pirates and sundowns they must have been lucrative contracts yeah, yeah. are you saying that statement becomes true now after you've retired yeah, yeah. yeah. like like you know i'm i'm so grateful for tabo september and I, and I and i and i wish that we can bump into each other and actually thank him for that statement even though he was saying it for, for the sake of saying it but it changed how i how i started planning outside of football and for that is, like I said, it, it was never about money, but I'm, I can safely say that I'm earning like a footballer. Yeah. My yeah. salary now, it's, it's, it's like I'm, a, I'm, I'm playing for my Sundowns. Yeah. But, uh, but the thing like now is I enjoy the companies that I'm working with. I enjoy what I'm doing. And it's a different space altogether. And it's a very different yeah. space, very challenging, very demanding, but I enjoy the space that I'm in. And also within that, like you spoke earlier, you spoke, spoke about the agency. It's because I want the players or the people that we manage to understand the value of their names. We, we sell ourselves so short, not understanding the, the, the value that we have. We, we have agents that signs us, and then at the end of the day, we end up feeling like we're working for them, whereas they're the other ones that work for they're us. They're working for you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we never understood that. I've, I've seen players struggling, even today, are struggling with understanding that, that this yeah. agent you making money for him is not yeah, making yeah, money yeah. for you. Yeah. You understand? So, so it's us just you know, trying to teach Machita the game. That's it. That's it. We're not trying to make money out of them. We're just trying to teach them the game so that we can empower these guys. So that they want they can empower other buyers. Because knowledge is it is power, yeah. really. Yeah. And all these things you've kind of conceptualized them all on your own, or did you have a little bit of help from your former agent who was looking after you when you were a footballer? Or no. because I mean, did you go to did you do a course Next. at one of the tertiary institutions? Like, how did it come about? Because it's. You know, I mean, there's this uh, misconception that uh, footballers, when it comes to body booking, yeah. you know, who who to fail, like, yeah. you know? but to come out of retirement and, and launch a new sort of career altogether like that. And I think, I th and I think it's, it's the perception and, and, and the narrative that I've always tried to change. Or just because we play ball doesn't necessarily mean that you, all of us have to box us and put us in the one container and think that we all think the same and want to do the same things. And I'm not taking sure that other guys that are doing what a normal footballer will be doing because that's the passion that they have. Mm -hmm. That's their passion point, but I don't have that. And for now, I've always tried new things that I know that maybe when some, some of the guys, when they look at me, like, if he can, maybe let like an opportunity to actually think outside the box and trying to do this because when i was playing there's always this stigma of a footballer mm -hmm. good for nothing and all that type of stuff and for now as well and i think i lost so many uh, lucrative deals based on a stigma not because i was doing anything it's yeah. just that the stigma people didn't want to deal with footballers now things are slowly bit changed and you can see also all over the world footballers top footballers are taking their brands very seriously and now why can't we do that in south africa there's a reason why dr kumar still dr kumar after 40 yeah, years yeah, after yeah, time yeah, so why can't we have other doctors in the country and he's from a different era he's from altogether. a different era where, where really really there was no money compared yeah, to us yeah. so now why is it still so relevant why is it still uh, uh, um, associated with big brands what else do we do have as talented players within our country with different generations, why can't they do that? So I think that's in the change in the narrative and trying to make them understand that it is actually possible. So how do you sustain it? 
Uh, by, by keep reinventing yourself, rebranding yourself, um, constantly changing, constantly um, setting new targets and goals. I think that's, that's um, and staying relevant. I think that's the most important thing. Staying relevant is the most challenging thing because because you can be relevant getting to the wrong. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and trying to be relevant, doing the right thing. Sometimes it's, 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 it's the longer route, but the end game is, is very lucrative. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, Donna. Um, advice that you would give to young footballers uh, or any athletes, really, because the space that you ventured into uh, is, you know, could be, you know, football. Could, yeah. I mean, when you're talking about Samsonite, and that's just, yeah. that's just levels, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so what, what, what advice would you have for athletes in general? Maybe that's, let's not pigeonhole it into footballers per se, but we know that your, that's your first love. Yeah. So you'd gravitate towards advising uh, footballers. But in general, uh, how, do, how do they reinvent themselves? How do they sustain it? How do they make sure that they own their image? Um, my advice to, 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 to them is, is gather as much information as you can. Um, most of the time is footballers because I was once that type of a footballer where um, uh, I don't want too many noise in my ears. I think when people are talking so I think I think I still have so much time to actually decide as to what is it that I want to do only not realizing what my fast. So I would say gather as much information as you want to do and it's okay if you don't know exactly what is it that you're going to do after retiring and it's okay. But you need to have a plan as to what is it that you want to do. I've, I've, I'm friends now with, with current rugby players. The stuff that they're doing outside the pitch is insane. Yeah. And I'm looking at footballers that are more famous than these guys. They're doing even half a percentage mm -hmm. of the things that they're doing. And it because also is the guys understand the value, their value. They understand their image rights value. Uh, footballers, we don't. We're thinking that... Um, being able to be played on the pitch, somebody else is doing us a favor. Being signed to a certain team, somebody else is doing us a favor. Not understanding that the football itself, the product is the players. Yeah. You know, the, the stakeholders are the players. And it's just that information on its own, I think that's where things uh, we can trigger the minds. Because all, all we're trying to do is just trigger the mind, force players to think outside the box. My advice for them is going to get as much information as you want because we can sit here and speak about investment. You can speak about all these other things. How many footballers have invested before and the investment went sideways? Mm. It has happened before. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you investing, it's, it's, it guarantees you success. Yeah. But and I'm sure you failed as well. You lost. launched a couple of businesses that of course. Or, or uh, of proposals course. that didn't go your way. Of yet. course, of course. You, 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 you get to be told, yeah, this one is going to be nice in five years. You put your money there, you put your money there, you put your money there. And we've always been told, but yeah, but don't put all your eggs in one basket. I'll say that put your, all your eggs in one basket. Because yeah. then you've got something to fight for. You've got something that drives you. Because then once that... Uh, becomes better whatever that you have in your basket you can start venturing into other small onion things on the side and also it's because of this is also the type of information that I also learned later on as I started retiring and started now being um, um, having conversation with different people from different uh, segments of life CEOs irrespective of who the person is you start learning and those are the people that I never got to be in the same space because I was a football because now when I was a footballer I, I saw it I'm the same mentality that Tempers only has. Yeah. It's the same mentality that I had. I just want to play football. Yeah. I'm busy into it. <laughs> Let me play football. I yeah. used to be that guy. Yeah. And now, now that I've found myself in spaces and in, 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 in rooms of, of well educated people in high positions to the information that they're giving us, I wish I knew that earlier on. Hmm. Yeah. And your your the the family now where you are in your life yeah. they, it's 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 well balanced you you finally managed to to strike a, a, a balance so to speak yeah yeah but you you it, it took us a while uh, because hey, to unlearn all the bad habits it, it became a problem uh, for me personally yeah. um, and 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 to learn to to learn to 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 allow somebody else to love you I think that was one thing that I was. Sorry that I was struggling with to allow somebody else to love me because I always felt that I'm the one supposed to love. Don't yeah. love me because <laughs> I don't want you to come into my life and leave me. Yeah, you know. So I can love you, and when I decide I can not provide, to, love, I can. Yeah, yeah. I can when I decide not to can, love you yeah. anymore, I can move out. Yeah. But when you decide not to love me anymore, I know how hurt I'll be because of that's been the story of my life. Yeah. But now with my relationship, now I'm allowed to be loved, I'm allowed to be taken care of. So that's a different dynamic to what I was used to, and that's where now the balance started striking in. And 
and, and also being allow, allowing myself to be vulnerable next to my partner and speaking about finances, which I've never discussed I can imagine. in my I can life imagine. with anybody. Yeah. So yeah. now having those type of discussions and be comfortable to say, as in, I cut it a bit, you know, broke. Yeah, of course. I want to make a change. Yeah, my money is ours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's marriage. That's that's how it is. Um, yeah. Men were born to provide, but also it's so nice when you have somebody also that is um, 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 very independent um, and somebody that is so super smart and that actually you know teaches me not just in the uh, the, from the financial aspect of things but she's from a very different background in terms of she grew up in a household where family thing in mama thing they're still married today uh you've got other siblings all of them went to school so mm. dana was eight at the same table i, I don't i completely don't, different to what you grew up different. experiencing yeah. right? so so those are the type of things now that help but are you to, doing that in your household are yeah, you learning yeah. to be better at that no, I've, I've, yo, 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 like the last four or five years, I, I became better at it. Like I don't, I always, I'll, after work, I'll rush home just to have dinner on the table. Now I, I started to understand and I started enjoying it. I started yeah. loving it. I, I want to go home and eat dinner. I want to go see my son when I do have time, when I don't have time, because I know the type of works that we do. It takes so much time of you. But when I don't have, uh, when I don't have any work, I'll prefer to be at home with yeah. my family because the understanding part of it. But before, when I'm free, I want to be on the street. The streets are calling my brother. <laughs> <laughs> so you are raising them different to I'm trying. how you raised. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. It's, it's, it's a constant tr struggle, right? You, you, you're always trying because you, you're hoping. You, you, you're trying to do the best that you can and hoping that your, your kids going to come out right. Yeah. You're trying the best that you can. At times... And but you're still creating a future for them because I mean you're still only forty. You know? Of course. Yeah. Hey, Louis, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's in public. You celebrated your, your yeah, birthday the other day. You I went know, big, right? so we all know how old you are. And you are a footballer. Ash. Unless he is cheating, you know, he's cheating yeah, uh, right? next. So it's uh, next. Um yeah, I mean it's just that it's 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 a constant struggle of trying to be be better. But also now um I I made peace with the fact that I never had a relationship with my dad. So I stopped trying to do things that my dad never did. Um, because my memory of my dad is very short. I was eight years the last time I saw my dad. So I, was, so I stopped competing with that. Yeah. So I'm trying to be the best person that I can without having to compare myself with anybody else. Because I don't know they can empower other by because knowledge is it is power, yeah. really, yeah. And all these things you've kind of conceptualized them all on your own, or did you have a little bit of help from your former agent who was looking after you when you were a footballer? Or no. because I mean, did you go to did you do a course Next. at one of the tertiary institutions? Like, how did it come about? Because it's you know, I, I mean, there's this uh, misconception that uh, footballers, when it comes to body booking, yeah. you know. Who would to fail? Like, yeah. You know? But to come out of retirement and and launch a new sort of career altogether like that, and I think I th and I think it's it's the perception and 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 the narrative that I've always trying to change. Or just because we play ball doesn't necessarily mean that you, all of us have to box us and put us in the one container and think that we all think the same. We want to do the same things. And I'm not taking sure that other guys that are doing what a normal footballer will be doing because that's the passion that they have. That's the passion point, but I don't have that. And for now, I've always tried new things that I know that maybe when some of, some of the guys, when they look at me, like, if he can, maybe let like an opportunity to actually think outside the box and trying to do this. Because when I was playing, there's always this stigma of a footballer, mm -hmm. good for nothing and all that type of stuff. And for now as well, and I think I lost so many uh, lucrative deals based on a stigma, not because I was doing anything. It's yeah. just that the stigma, people didn't want to deal with footballers. Now things are slowly a bit changed and you can see also all over the world, footballers, top footballers are taking their brands very seriously. And now why can't we do that in South Africa? There's a reason why Dr. Kumar is still Dr. Kumar after 40 yeah, years after yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So why can't we have other doctors in the country? And he's from a different era altogether. He's from altogether. a different era where, where really, really there was no money compared yeah, to us. Yeah. So now why is it still so relevant? Why is it still uh, uh, um, associated with big brands? What else do we do have as talented players within our country with different generations, why can't they do that? So I think that's in your change and the narrative and trying to make them understand that it is actually possible. So how do you sustain it? Uh, by, by keep reinventing yourself, rebranding yourself, um, constantly changing, constantly um, setting new targets and goals. I think that's, that's um, and staying relevant. I think that's the most important thing. Staying relevant is the most challenging thing because 
because you can be relevant getting to the wrong yeah, yeah and 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 trying to be relevant doing the right thing sometimes it's 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 the longer route but the end game is is very lucrative hmm. 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 that's interesting donna um advice that you would give to young footballers uh, or any athletes really because the space that you ventured into uh is you know could be you know football could, yeah. I mean, when you're talking about samsonite and that's just yeah that's just levels bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know so what 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 advice would you have for athletes in general maybe that's let's not pigeonhole it into footballers per se but we know that your that's your first love yeah so you'd gravitate towards advising uh, footballers but in general um, how do how do they reinvent themselves how do they sustain it how do they make sure that they own their image um my advice to 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 them is is get as much information as you can um most of the time is footballers because i was once that type of a footballer where um uh, i don't want too many noise in my ears i think when people are talking about so I think I think I still have so much time to actually decide as to what is it that I want to do, only not realizing what I'm not my fast. So I'll say gather as much information as you want to do, and it's okay if you don't know exactly what is it that you're gonna do after retiring, and it's okay, but you need to have a plan as to what is it that you want to do. I've, I've I'm friends now with with current rugby players. The stuff that they're doing outside the pitch is insane, yeah. and I'm looking at footballers that are more famous than these guys. They doing even half a percentage mm -hmm. of the things that they're doing. And it because also is the guys understand the value, their value. They understand their image rights value. Uh, footballers, we don't. We're thinking that um, being able to be played on the pitch, somebody else is doing us a favor. Being signed to a certain team, somebody else is doing us a favor. Not understanding that the football itself, the product is the players. Yeah. You know, the, the stakeholders are the players. And it just that information on its own, I think that's where it, things uh, we can trigger the minds because all of what we're trying to do just trigger the mind force players to think outside the box my advice for them are going to get as much information as you want because we can sit here and speak about investment you can speak about all these other things how many footballers have invested before and the investment went sideways hmm. it has happened before yeah so it doesn't necessarily mean that you investing it's, it's it guarantees you success yeah. but and i'm sure you failed as well you lost. launched a couple of businesses that oh, of course you know, or, or uh, of proposals course. that didn't go your way of course yeah. of course you 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 get to be told, yeah, this one is going to be nice in five years. You put your money there, you put your money there, you put your money there. And we've always been told, but yeah, but don't put all your eggs in one basket. I'll say that put your, all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Because then you've got something to fight for. You've got something that drives you. Because then once that uh, becomes better, whatever that you have in your basket, you can start venturing into other small and other things on the side. And also it's because of this is also the type of information that I also learned later on as I started retiring and started now being... Um, um, having conversation with different people from different uh, segments of life, CEOs, irrespective of who the person is, you start learning. And those are the people that I never got to be in the same space because I was a football. Because now when I was a footballer, I, I swear, I'm the same mentality that Tempers only has. Yeah. It's the same mentality that I had. I just want to play football. Yeah. <laughs> Let me play football. I yeah. used to be that guy. And yeah. now, now that I've found myself in spaces and in, 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 in rooms of, of well-educated people in high positions to the information that they're giving us, I wish I knew that earlier on. Hmm. Yeah. And your, your, the, the family now, where you are in your life, yeah. they, it's, it's, it's well-balanced. You've, you've finally managed to, to strike a, a, a balance, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. You, you, it, it took us a while uh, because hey, to unlearn all the bad habits it, it became a problem. Uh, for me personally, yeah. um, and 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 to learn to to learn to 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 allow somebody else to love you. I think that was one thing that I was sorry that I was struggling with to allow somebody else to love me because I always felt that I'm the one who's supposed to love. Don't yeah. love me because <laughs> I don't want you to come into my life and leave me. Yeah, you know. So I can love you, and when I decide I can not provide, to, love, I can. Yeah, yeah. I can when I decide not to I love you anymore, I can move out. Yeah. But when you decide not to love me anymore, I know how hurt I'll be because of that's been the story of my life. Yeah. But now, with my relationship, now I allowed to be loved, I am allowed to be taken care of. So that's a different dynamic to what I was used to, and that's when now the balance started striking in. And, and also being allow, allowing myself to be vulnerable next to my partner and speaking about finances, which I've never discussed I can imagine. in my can life imagine. with anybody. Yeah. So now having those type of discussions and be comfortable 
to say as in a cut it a bit, you know, broke. Yeah, yeah, of course. I want to make Yeah, my money is ours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's marriage. That's that's how it is. Uh, yeah. Men were born to provide, but also it's so nice when you have somebody also that is um, 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 very independent um, and somebody that is so super smart and that actually you know teaches me not just in the uh, the, from the financial aspect of things but she's from a very different background in terms of she grew up in a household where family thing in my mouth thing they're still married today uh you've got other siblings all of them went to school so mm. dana was ate at the same table i, I don't I completely don't, different to what you grew up different. experiencing yeah. right? so so those are the type of things now that help but are you too. doing that in your household are yeah, you yeah. learning to be better at that no, I've, I've, yo, 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 like the last four or five years, I, I became better at it. Like, I don't, I always, I'll, after work, I'll rush home just to have dinner on the table. Now, I started to understand and I started enjoying it. I started yeah. loving it. I, I want to go home and eat dinner. I want to go see my son when I do have time, when I don't have time, because I know the type of works that we do. It takes so much time of you, but when I don't have uh, when I don't have any work, I'll prefer to be at home with yeah. my family because the understanding part of it. But before, when I'm free, I want to be on the street. The streets are calling my brother. <laughs> <laughs> so you are raising them different to I'm trying. How you raised, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm trying. It's 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 a constant tr struggle, right? You you you're always trying because you you hoping. You, you, you're trying to do the best that you can and hoping that your, your kids are going to come out right. Yeah. You're trying the best that you can at times. And you're still creating a future for them because, I mean, you're still course. only 40. You of know? course. Yeah. Hey, Lue, I'm free. <laughs> Really? Well, it's it's in public. You celebrated your your yeah, birthday the other day. You I went know, big, right? so we all know how old you are. And you are a footballer. Unless he is cheating, unless he is cheating, yeah. Uh, next, so it's uh, next. Um, yeah, man. It's just that it's 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 a constant struggle of trying to be be better. But also now, um, I I made peace with the fact that I never had a relationship with my dad, so I stopped trying to do things that my dad never did um, because my memory of my dad is very short i was eight years the last time i saw my dad so I, so i stopped competing with that yeah. so i'm trying to be the best person that i can without having to compare myself with anybody else because i, I would hate to think or when are you in my position this is what you could do you're not you're in a different position i'm in a different position so i'm going to do the best that i can at this position so that whenever if there's something wrong at you i'll be able to own it and because of it's all me, not because of I've learned the certain thing from somebody else. Because I realized there's well, so many things that I've learned by myself, 80% of them, they became successful. So this is what I'm trying to do with my kids. I think that's a nice little segue into our ending there. You okay. know, um, own it, uh, uh, you know, prosper, take it forward, yeah. uh, open doors and do what no footballer uh, has ever done. I think that's, that's the idea.